now that we've created the polars, we want to save our file. Okay, now we can work on designing a blade. We're going to say new. And it, this just gives us a sort of a default blade. If we say show rotor here, we can see that this is a three bladed rotor with some default numbers in it. We're going to change these to fit the design that I want to do. Since I've already designed some blades, some of these parameters are already nailed down. So I am using three blades. My hub radius is actually 34 millimeters, 34. The hub radius tells you the, the position of the root of the blade from the center of rotation. And at position zero, that is the root of the blade. And on my blades, I usually start in this process by saying um, position of zero, the cord is 100. And as a default, I'll put in like 45 degrees twist. And then the tip of the blade is 350 millimeters out. 350. And the cord, I'll just tell it 75. And I'll say that the twist is like 5 degrees. So with those parameters you get a blade with the bottom that's twisted and the top that's not as twisted. Right now, since there's no airfoil or polar specified, you're just getting flat blades. So now we're going to specify that this foil is the NACA one that we had the modified trailing edge for. There. So here's what the default best guess blade looks like. We can now work on doing optimizations. Before we do that, I'm going to hit I'm going to hit save and I'm going to show you guys some some interesting things about how this process works. I'm going to hit save here also. Okay. If we go back to this rotor, we want to edit it. So we hit edit and if I went to optimize now, you can optimize for a number of different bl blade parameters. Now, since we only have two airfoils here, this doesn't change much. So the thing that I want to show you first off is when you have, um, you, we've got a, a, a tip speed ratio of three right now. Let's change this to 0.1. So that means that it's, it's barely spinning at all. And if we say optimize twist for optimal lift drag, and we say optimize, it calculates, and unfortunately you have to hit done here, it calculates the twist of the two airfoils that gives you the optimum lift to drag angle. As we saw in the polar, that optimal angle of attack was about eight degrees. So if we look over here to the twist that it has generated at the root, it has given us an 80 degree twist, which means that um, the, the offset from like the flow direction is just under 10 degrees which makes sense when we figure that this blade is moving a little bit, it's moving slowly. So the amount of, of, of twist that it needs to give you that eight degrees angle of attack is somewhere in the neighborhood of, well, it, it says it's just a little less than 10 at the root and then a little bit more at the tip because the tip being further away from the center um, needs to be twisted a little bit more to give you that angle of attack. And now if we go back to the optimize and we change this to one, say one, and we say optimize for optimal lift to drag, we say optimize there. So now it has to hit done. It has given us more twist at the tip than we had before. And, and at the bottom too, uh, because the blade is is going around faster. So 
you can see that the the in the, in the optimize menu the the tip to speed ratio controls how much the blade is twisted and you can also if we take this back down to uh, point one point one and we go back to here you can it, it, this is going to give us our optimized blade and then you can also input an, an additional amount of twist that you put in manually by giving a, an offset here so if we said um, instead of zero degrees here we said five degrees five and we said optimize it twists the entire blade five more degrees than is optimal and you can tweak that let's say we said 10 see how it twists the whole thing and if we go back to zero again and optimize now it's giving you the exact opt optimization that you wanted so that gives you a way to manipulate these blades if you want to um, another thing i want to point out is that let's just say that this we started this at one we say optimize you've got a ton of twist there um, if we say two it twists it even more and what happens here is that the, the tip of the blade gets super twisted and let's just say if i said 10 it actually when i when i go that fast it's actually twisted further and when i zoom in like this it kind of it kind of clips the end of the tip so i can only go so far so it's actually twisted further than um than flat and what that does is that um if you have a blade that that you've designed for a super fast rotor but but it's in very very light breezes the whole tip of the blade doesn't really contribute to getting the rotor started the bottom does because it's twisted off a little bit but the top doesn't really do anything except create drag so if you have if you've optimized your your blade for a super high um, tip speed it's not going to want to start as easily so now we have uh, our default blade again right now it only has two sections in it in order to do an optimization that includes changing the width of the cord we need to add more segments to this blade so that it can change the the, the blade profile um, from the center towards the outside okay we're going to do that next if I click on this position and I say insert after it will insert a new position halfway in between the the previous and the next values and it will interpolate the cord and the twist for each one of those values so what we want for this blade is to have lots and lots of these positions in order to do our optimization so the way that I do that is I'll start at the top and I'll say insert after section one and then I'll move down two and say insert after three. So now we've got five. And now if I go back to the top and say insert after one, move down two, insert after three, skip one, skip one. Now we've got an evenly spaced number of, of pieces. And I do that a few times in order to get a whole bunch of pieces. So we'll do that. So this one gives us 17 pieces. And now let's go ahead and do it one more time. Because when I've, when I've made blades with 17 pieces in them, they, they, they end up, when you 3D print them, they look a little chunky on the trailing edge. Um, it seemed like the sweet spot for me was doing one more pass it would be really nice if this software would do this automatically and you could just tell it how many segments you wanted instead of having to do this weird insert procedure okay so now we've got 33 segments actually we've got 33 positions there are 32 segments on here so there is our starting blade and now when we go to the optimize menu i can do the same thing and just optimize the twist so if i say optimize it gives you 
let me hit done here. So it, it actually concentrates the twist down at the base of the blade and up towards the tip, it's a little bit smoother. Now we can also optimize the cord of this. And there are some different methods for optimizing this cord. Um, this one, what is it, uh, Schmitz, gives you a different shape than this Betts optimization. Um, some of the YouTube videos that are out there talk a lot about the Betts optimization, but they don't talk about the Schmitz one. The cord optimization here stretches the cord to fill the disc to with the optimum amount of material so that you get the the most power transfer so if you're m moving slowly if you're moving with a tip speed ratio of one it's going to stretch out the cord much larger to try to fill the disc up so if i say optimize here see how it's stretched out um, and the faster that I go, if I make this two and say optimize, the blade gets narrower. If I say three, optimize, it gets even skinnier. And four gets even skinnier. And that's because the rotor is spinning faster and faster and faster, so it doesn't need as much material to um, cover up the disc with um, with blade in order to get out the power. If I sh switch this from Schmitz to Betts optimization and I hit optimize, it gives you this wide taper at the bottom, uh, which people talk about in other YouTube videos. I prefer the Schmitz one. I just like the way that that looks better. I'm sure that there is there are papers out there that explain the math behind that. I haven't bothered to read them. Let's say done here and look at the shape of this blade. So now the, the tip of this is almost flat. Um, and most of the twist is happening at the bottom of the blade. And again, what that's going to do is it's going to give you, it's going to make it harder for this blade to start with a very light wind. So there's a, there's a compromise that you need to make between um, startup speed and how fast you want this thing to spin. Um, when I'm doing whirly gig stuff, it's important to me for it to start at a slow wind speed. And I don't particularly care that it spins super, super fast because if it spins super, super fast, with 3D printed blades, that's going to put a lot of centrifugal force on here, and it's going to want to rip those blades apart. Also notice that when you increase your tip speed ratio and the tip of the blade gets narrower, let's change this to Schmitz, optimize. When this gets narrower, it also gets thinner. And for me, when I'm designing a blade that has a carbon fiber aero shaft inside of it, if this gets too thin, then the carbon fiber aero shaft doesn't fit anymore. So I can only go so thin for the tip of this in order to get um, a blade that the shaft will fit inside of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set these parameters so that the geometry that I get matches up with my previously designed blade. And this was optimized for tip speed ratio of three and optimizing twist for optimal lift of drag and also the optimal cord using the Schmitz method. And when I say done here, I can cross check that. So my cord matches and my twist angle matches also. And then my tip is thick enough at 70 millimeters cord that gives me enough thickness that I can put the, uh, the carbon fiber tube inside of it. And it still has positive twist angle. Now, if I go back and look at this blade, the twist happens on each one of these sections at the quarter cord when you're using this default um, blade design method. You can change that by 
clicking on this advanced blade design and you can change things instead of having the twist happen at the quarter cord which is uh 25 percent you can change it so that it happens at a different spot um if for instance let's just say that i wanted this thing to be twisted around the point of maximum thickness the maximum thickness happens at 30 percent back and i could change all of these to 0.3 in my case, I want it to happen at the center of gravity of the airfoil section, which I have already measured to happen at 42% back. So I'm going to change this twist percent to be 0.42. And I'm going to see if I can copy and paste this. And see how when I do that, it's changing the shape of each one of the sections. It's shifting that, that twist point to a different spot in the airfoil. So I've got to paste this a bunch of times. There. So now this is my new blade that is twisted around the CG of the airfoil instead of being twisted around the quarter cord. If you see here, there's a different display for the, um, the blades when you're in this advanced blade design uh, section because you can actually manipulate this, this twist line. So they, they cut away one side of the blade um, shape so that you can see inside. If I go back to the basic blade design, it, it, it covers that over so you can't see it anymore. All right, so now if I fabricate these blades, I am going to get the same blade parameters as far as cord and twist go. So aerodynamically, they should be the same. It's just that they, when they're built, the twist happens at the center of gravity of the airfoil rather than at the quarter cord. So the next step is to save it so that I don't lose my work. Okay, now I can export this geometry out so that I can use it in my CAD software as a basis for a blade. And that will probably be the subject of a next video.